Hey, it's James from Mission, and today we're looking at noise differences between AC and DC pedal board power supplies. Mission has a product called the 529 that powers a pedal board from a USB source, such as a battery or a wall charger. Some people believe that modern switching power supplies and DC to DC converters are noisier, and that using a traditional larger AC power supply is going to be quieter. Others think that using a battery and isolating the pedal board from wall power is going to avoid AC noise, ground loops, etc. And so this will be quiet. But which is correct? In this video, we're going to connect the same pedal board to a high quality AC reference power supply, a low cost generic switching power supply I got on the internet, and a Mission 529 with both battery and wall power, and we'll measure the noise and compare them. Okay, ready? Let's go. Just before the turn of the 19th century, engineers and industrialists were trying to figure out how to get a practical electrical supply into homes and businesses. Electricity was anticipated to be a cleaner, safer and more reliable source of energy to replace candles and gas lighting in residences and steam-powered machinery in industry. In the US, a battle of technology and business took place between Thomas Edison, proponent of direct current, and Nikola Tesla and George Westinghouse, pioneers of alternating current. The principal challenge was that low voltage DC, such as from a battery, is ideal for small devices and local power, but a significant amount of energy is lost to heat when transferring over a distance in cables. The voltage needed to be raised to much higher levels to be efficiently sent over a long distance, but this was hard to do back then with direct current. Tesla and Westinghouse developed alternating current, which is much easier to convert between different voltages using simple transformers, and this is the key reason that this won out over DC. This is the system we still use today. AC is generated in large power stations in industrial areas, stepped up to high voltages, sometimes hundreds of thousands of volts, for transmission in power lines around the country. Then it stepped down again a few times, eventually to the 100 or 2 volts at the wall outlet. Then we often convert it to DC for use in our small devices such as guitar pedals. OK, here's the setup. I have a pedal train nano with a mixture of small analog and digital pedals. This is the pedal board I built for an article about building the cheapest pedal board on Amazon Prime. I'm very grateful to the folks over at IK Multimedia who provided the iRig Pro. I'm testing this and I'll be doing some more videos demonstrating a fully mobile USB powered wireless rig using this with the Mission 529. For now in this demo I'm using the iRig to provide the USB audio interface between the pedal board and the PC so we can do the noise analysis. The AC power supply is the MXR MC403 power system. We use these in the Mission Lab as our reference power supplies because of their good performance. This is a linear AC-DC power supply and the wall power plugs directly into the side of the unit. The low cost power supply is the AGP Tech CP05. I purchased this on Amazon for around 30 bucks for a previous video on isolated versus daisy chain power supplies. This one uses a wall warp to convert the AC to 18 volt DC to power the unit. To test DC we're using a Mission 529 and a lithium ion rechargeable battery. The 529 can use any USB power source so we'll try this with a wall warp too and see if there's any difference. The MXR uses internal transformers to drop the voltage and rectifiers to convert to DC. With AC supplies we're looking for issues with 60 cycle hum. Unlike DC where current flows continuously in one direction, AC oscillates back and forth. This is what allows the AC to be easily transformed between voltages, thanks to the properties of electromagnetism. In the US wall power oscillates at 60 Hz. In some other countries it's 50 Hz. Unfortunately those same properties that allow transformers to work can also cause electromagnetic interference, 
We sometimes hear it as hum in audio systems. Direct current does not oscillate, but we have another problem, converting DC voltages. Battery voltage is determined by its chemistry, for example 1.5 volt from an alkaline cell, 1.2 for nickel, 3.7 for lithium ion, etc. Transformers don't work for DC, so to provide other voltages we use modern integrated circuit based DC to DC converters. The key mechanism of how these work is by switching current flow on and off quite quickly using transistors. By controlling the on and off times, called the duty cycle, the switching converters can easily convert between voltages. The trade-off is that now we're no longer just providing a continuous current flow in one direction, but a switching current on and off through inductors. This can create a similar issue with noise from electromagnetic interference as we had with our AC supply. The main difference is in the frequency. 60 cycle hum sounds like this. DC converter switching sounds more like this. A good power supply design will filter these out as much as possible. So let's go measure these and see how they do. Okay, here's test one. I have a guitar plugged into the input of the pedal board, but the volume is turned down so we measure the noise floor without anything from the guitar pickups. I'm using the MXR AC power supply. The AC power in the lab is very stable, but I've wrapped the AC input cable a couple of times around a ferrite just to give us the best possible baseline. Okay, here we go. We can see the peak noise is at 60 Hz, which is pretty much what we would expect. Now let's turn the volume on the guitar up. You can see that after it stabilizes, there's not much difference in the profile. Let's quickly run through the rest of them, and then we'll compare the interesting ones.
Here's the money shot. The pink trace is the AC linear supply with the large toroidal transformer and the blue trace is the 529 switching supply with the USB battery. You can see that the response is almost identical except the AC supply has that small amount of extra noise at 60 Hz. The switching supply has nothing at that frequency because no AC is present. So right there the suggestion that DC switching effects pedal power supplies are noisier is totally busted. Both of these are actually very quiet. Even the 60 cycle peak on the AC supply is at neg 98 dBU, which is actually slightly less than the neg 95 dBU at the very top of the noise floor. Okay, so batteries seem to work, but what about using the 529 with a wall power supply? Surely a wall warp is going to cause lots of switching noise. Well, that's busted too. Here the green trace is the 529 with a decent quality USB wall mount power supply. And although we now see a little 60Hz noise starting to creep in, it's still as good or better than the linear supply. So what's going on? Don't some people get noise in their rigs when using switching power supplies? Is it fake news? A conspiracy by makers of expensive transformers? Well, it's really just a matter of getting the best thing for the job. Here, the orange line is the low cost power supply, and we can definitely see some increase in noise. It's not terrible, but it's there. Some can be much worse, but switching converters that are properly designed for audio use filter this out or move it into frequency ranges outside the audible spectrum. This last scan compares the 529 with the MXR again, but this time with all the effects pedals switched on. Here we can see that any small difference in noise performance of the power supplies is wiped out by the increase in the noise floor anyway once we enable a few effects. In guitar rigs there is often so much noise from amps, effects, pickups etc the power supply noise is going to be the least of your problems. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you again next time.